Oh, hi, didn't see you there. Lynn here, welcome to another episode. So I'm putting this damp proof course on the bottom of the bearers here, because in about four days time, it's gonna be concrete there. That was fun, on to the next bit. So I'm going to cut up a whole bunch of threaded rod, 12mm, and that's going to act as our anchors down to our ring foundation. So what I'm going to do now is drill a whole bunch of holes from underneath at 900mm spacings and 150 from the ends or any joins of the bearers, and then put the bolts in. Three six oh four mentions something about bending these. The reason for that is, well, the reason they say is that it stops the bolt from turning when you do up the nut, which is true. But also, it makes it more difficult for the bolt to pull up out of the concrete. How about the hammer? Bend. Yeah. Done with the bolt, so we're going to make a start laying out the steel now. The way we're going to do it is tie our top bar to the bolts and then hang everything from that, and that way it's not going to move around when we pour the concrete. We also need these links. They're not stirrups in the normal sense, but um, just to tie the top and bottom bars together. Isn't it weird that just the engineers can override the preset before? Yeah. So they go ahead one foundy that the um, engineer specified, I think, 450 left. That's like almost half of what preset before specifies. <laughs> yeah, man, they'll do whatever they want, hey. <laughs> oh, that's their problem. Yeah, so much steel in it anyway. They should send the last foundry just done. They had the box CL of, of like if the inside the outside going, you know, it said opposite. Because it's yeah. inside CL oh, okay. goes to the outside and then you had to have a corner on that. So the corner was like and then here we had D oh eight D sixteen and then eight R ten links. Yeah. Box one. You had to fit your stirrups in, it was a nightmare, eh? Right? It took three days to do steel. <laughs> Yeah, and then you go to, yeah, open out or either, it's a nightmare. These are a lot easier than stirrups, because stirrups you'd have to put on before you can get the steel tied. One of the things that we need to do, it's the same with any foundation when you connect it to an existing foundation. You need to connect it to the old foundation. So in this case what we're doing is drilling holes and we're going to epoxy while reinforcing and then that gets connected to the steel in our new foundation. So we're still waiting on an answer from the engineer regarding how we're going to tie on the other side. Because the drawing he's given us won't work there because our ring foundation for the old, the, um, the extension, the part of the foundation that's staying how it is, is not high enough to uh, get two bars in like we did on this side. So we can't even epoxy those all in because we've only got one nozzle. So while we're waiting on the outside, we can't really go boxing the outside because it needs to get inspected. Apart from the front, I think it should be able to sit down. But um, the inside's pretty straightforward. These pins are just stop of blowing out and we're just fixing it to the joist. So we just get it nice and plumb, we get the right distance from the bearer. And once these are all on, this boxing down here, I'm not sure you can see, gets raised up to the height at the bottom of the bearer, which will be our port. It's a bit tricky because these pegs are right at the edge of the figure.
All right, so what we're doing here is making 18 boxes for those little vents to fit in. Um, so we are pre-cutting a whole bunch of components and I'll show you how they go together in a second. Part of that is sometimes we need to move these links. So they need to be 50mm clear, just like from any concrete that is exposed to the outside. Whereas for an interior concrete surface, they can be 30mm from the surface. So we've got to get these two high. Too much. We're just using these bar chairs to do that. Stirrups, of course, need to be tied on as well. well when you're tying steel, the easiest way is just a single layer like that. But it's not very strong. And the better way is to double it over and tie it like that. So you've got two layers. And it's a lot stronger. It's certainly stronger than doing two individual layers. That makes sense. We pull it tight as well. It's quite tight there. <laughs> Maybe go like. Up to here, yeah. dig, dig up to here, like a yeah. little bit more for the concrete, you know. Yeah. Yes, mate. So his plan was for another uh, piece of steel to be epoxied into concrete there, but there's no concrete there. So the ideal solution would be to break all this out until we hit some decent concrete but there's no guarantee that the foundation over here is full depth anyway so what he suggested is actually just dig this out more so that the new slab goes underneath this as well as still having the one epoxied rod in the top there plenty in there it's important that when you drill these holes, you make them bigger than the rebar. Otherwise, you smack the rebar in there. Oh. A little bit of a mess of that. Smack the rebar in there, and you risk cracking the concrete. Oh, the wood. Yeah, you We've also got to rip a 45 so that on our boxing we can put a little uh, angle. It's not a rebate, but you know what I mean if you've done foundations before. So you get this little kick out and then the water runs down and goes out from the building. Uh, nowadays on modern houses we tend to go the other way and actually have the foundation in slightly from the cladding.
So today's the big day, concrete day. Uh, we've got a little bit of boxing to do. We've done all that side and the other side. I've just got this side to do. And probably, hopefully, we'll get that done and have an early lunch. Because lunch is popped in for one, which is when we have lunch. And once that turns up, we're not stopping. That's the front done, and uh, that's the hardest part because the bottom of the shutter is pretty much ground level and the pour I think is about 800 deep there whereas around the other side it's 600 or less and the shutters are below ground level so it's going to be heaps easier and I'm sure you guys don't really want to see that. Meanwhile James has almost done this whole side, awesome! Finished up early, so we're just waiting on concrete now. So, um, early and possibly long lunch. Concrete pump here. Yeah. Oh, right, we'll go now. Oh, it's pretty sloppy. Yeah, I need to vibrate it. Yeah. So it appears there's a little bit of block in the pipe, so there's just a bit of a delay. We'll be underway momentarily. There we go, there's our block. <laughs> This is all just getting a pretty rough trail because it's never going to be seen. So um, pretty easy from here and then just a bit of a clean up. Alright, all done, all cleaned up. Um, that went pretty well, we didn't have any blowouts. We had a few minor leaks at the bottom where I filled in soil this morning so it would have been a lot worse if we had it. So uh, all in all, I think I'm pretty happy and James is happy. Tune in next week to find out how good the pour really was when we debox it. Thanks for watching, have a good one. Cheers.